We're back. I'm Brian, and this is a Bro Do It Yourself Condo Renovation um, Series Number Six. You know, I've been back from a uh, vacation, and I almost forgot to take you guys along. Um, what I'm doing now today is continuing this process down the utility room here, where uh, kind of the heart and brains of everything is going to start from before I do the rest of this place. Um, what I need to do today, instead of attacking this uh, leak and freeze faucet, which is something I need to do before I move my chest freezer to its uh, to its location, um, before I run the liquid tide and all that stuff in the the uh, wire to it and uh, set up a uh, emergency disconnect. I'm going to go on because this has been on my brain. I'm going to go on and set up my. Uh, my electric. Um, I forgot to bring you along on this mercy disconnect because I, I just wasn't thinking. I was just chomping at the bit to get back to stuff. So let me show you. I'm pulled up here. And see if I can't get her a little better. All it is very simple. I actually finished this thing up. I mean, it was hugging me, bugging me um, the whole time I was uh, on vacation. But back here at the end of this hammer, what I did is supported this expansion tank with a simple little bracket there. It takes all the stress off of uh, the uh, shark bite. Okay, simple fix, no big deal. I also had a small drop from, um, I think it's from moving around all this stuff. Uh, and I saw a little oxidation here. It had a little green pus and build up. So. I put another um, another little compression fitting in there, cinch it up, put some uh, knocks on it. Um, so that's to the refrigerator. Filtered water to the refrigerator. I just since I had it there, I just want to hook it up. Um, also, something else I found out is I had a braided line here, and uh, I came home and there was a tiny little puddle right there. You can see the. Anyway, so I thought, what the heck's going on with that? So I took it off, did the pipe dope and tape and all that bull job. But it was a, a stainless braid for something else. I had a red gasket here. Not a gasket, but I don't have any idea. I'm not a plumber. I'm a mechanic. I don't know what this stuff is doing. I'm just doing this work. It had like a red plastic thing on either end. And... Uh, I don't know, it was just like this, except this is shark bite on one end. Um, those are both shark bites on the uh, on the ends of the... Uh, so this was not shark bite, it was just a qu three quarter inch connection to three quarter inch connection. So I went back to Home Depot and, and got this thing. This is actually for the hot water heater hookup. So this thing is working fabulously. I don't run out of water. It doesn't even act like it's going to run out of hot water. Of course, there's only two of us, but I mean, she can be doing a load of laundry, and you know, it's just amazing. It's pretty cool. I like that idea. So what I did is no big, great shakes. It's probably why I didn't bring you along. I didn't think to bring you along. Was uh, install this emergency disconnect. So very simple. Uh, I got ten. The thing that <laughs> my biggest problem was is I took some funneling and. Uh, which is like a non-water-based Vaseline, and I'm sure they make a specific stuff but, uh, for this to pull wires through these uh, 90 degree turns. Set number 10 is a, uh, kind of a hassle pulling through the 90s, but uh, that worked out well enough. And uh, I went and hooked this thing up, and um, I was thinking, man, I wonder what the story is with this breaker, because all of these boxes, all of these boxes here come with a uh, disconnect that's fusible. And if I'd have taken time when I bought these things, because I was just going to get the uh, non-fusible type, I didn't bother to even look at them. I saw 30 amp disconnect for aircon, and if I'd have taken the five more seconds, another. Uh, Ding dong thing! I could have seen right there where it says fusible puller. I didn't see fusible puller. I didn't give a shit. I just got the box. Put it uh, disconnects down here. So 
I was thinking, well, shoot, I'll just take a... I'm sitting down here, and I'm like an idiot. I'm looking at this thing for more than five minutes. I'm thinking, damn it, man. Line to line. It goes line on outside, and on the inside is your load. These two are your load. So you got line and load. Now, I'm not going to pull that thing off, so... Right now, it's energized. I don't want to fool with it, but... Um, I was thinking, well, I know what I'll do. I'll just take a piece of copper pipe or, I don't know, I'll work something out. Make a, stick some of the bolt in there. And I just went and bought some fuses. I held it in two bucks a piece. So I got 30 in fuses in this. And uh, where is my other box? I got my other box around here somewhere. I got it set up from a freezer, which has got a couple of 20 amp fuses in it. Is it here? Yeah, it's already set up for. So I got my deal set up for my chest freezer. Um, but that was no big deal. It's just I forgot to take it along, and um, that's a that's that story. So what I'll do is look at type from here up to the top, and um, what I'm going to do is end up taking this power source from coming from my main box in here. I'm going to take that. And I'm going to run it over to where my sub panel is going to go. I've got this generator. I bought the wrong one. I bought a 100 to 60 and I should have bought a 125. So I just purchased a 125 um, color or Eaton um, breaker. This has got a... I'll get all of that later, but I'm going to hang that dude there. I'm going to take some uh, 113 or 1113 and uh, SCR and run it from this box to here for my generator disconnect so I have 125 amp probably remove the hot water heater put my 125 amp put the, one, the 30 amp hot water heater over where my sub panel is so that uh, it'll be controlled by this uh, this generator uh, transfer box so it's going to be 125.60 my uh, I got a 10 kW Furman and uh, what I'm going to do is that's 50 amps I think but uh, I'm uh, what I'm going to do is the necessities I'm going to load over here um, and then, for instance, where my spall and stuff like that, I'm going to install upstairs. I'll run that, uh, that electric through here as the main because all I want to do is keep the chest freezer, um, the refrigerator, um, probably um, the water heater, and the heating system over here. Now that heating system appears to be 100 amps and two. Uh, I have to look into the furnace in the heating section. I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's just a 50 amps or it's a 100 amps here, but it's only going to be running part time. I'll be making a catalytic burn up and down to uh, switch on and off whatever I need because it's not going to load up at 100 and stay. It's going to hit your surge at 100 and then drop off. So whatever you're running, um, that's the way that works. So, I mean, you know, for all intents and purposes, I might put a 50 over here, too. I mean, I've got all, a couple of those already set in this Siemens box. So, i got a 50, and i got a 30. There's my 125, which is going to branch out to my garage. So, it's going to go main... The transfer, the sub, out to the garage, to the outdoor box, another sub. And uh, I've got all that stuff dialed in. And rather than make this another long winded uh, expose, what I'm doing to do is just I'm going to shut the shop up here now and get back to work and let you know what's going on. And, 
I'm I'm absolutely no good at doing this in process stuff, and I may have to start doing that at many event, but once I get into this, it may be a good idea, uh, as long as I'm not electrocuted by that time. So anyway, thanks for coming back, and uh, remember, it just keeps getting better. Thanks.